Welcome, welcome everybody. As you start trickling in here. I hope everyone has had a good day so far and you're ready to learn a little bit about nutrition. Got some good numbers. Yeah, hi guys, how's it going? Thank you for joining us. Jeanette, how's your evening? It's been good. You know, it's so beautiful here right now. I am definitely looking forward to like a nice evening walk as the sun sets afterwards. But uh, yeah, it's, it's been good. How about you? It's been good. I actually, uh, I took a walk to get my groceries. Perfect. I was about like five minutes away from Sobe. So I was like, you know, why am I going to just sit in my car and go? I had to pick up some milk. So mm -hmm. I was like, it's just some milk. I'll just go walk. So yeah. it was good. That's perfect. Yeah. Taking advantage of the sunshine. I, I, I don't know if you can see on the screen, but like I'm already like getting pretty burnt. I feel like I need to invest. You look in tanned. You don't yeah, look Okay, burnt. good. You gave me like that golden. <laughs> Maybe it's like know? the computer screen is like the blue is giving off. This it's working for look. you. I did not see a burn at all. <laughs> I appreciate <funny>. that. <laughs> We're just going to get started shortly. I'm just going to wait a few more minutes to let a few people few more people trickle in. That sounds great. What city is everyone from? Let's type it into the chat. We have Ottawa, Toronto. I'm from Mississauga. Mm -hmm. I'm from Ajax. Nice. Oh, Cambridge, London, lots Pickering. of Toronto. Nice. Ooh, I saw another Mississauga. <clears throat> oh, Kelowna. Moncton. Someone from BC. Oh, awesome. This is fun. I love this. I love it too. Nice. Yeah. Oh. Well, welcome, welcome, everybody. Before we get started, I, I'm just going to take this opportunity to say that this webinar will be recorded. So if you guys miss anything, we will be recording it. Um, and also that the chat is open. I will be answering any questions that you may have. I'm a naturopathic doctor. My name is Falza. So if any questions come along throughout, then you can just ask and I will answer as it comes. Jeanette, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's get awesome. this show on the road. Okay. Thank you, Healthy Planet, for having us. I'd like to introduce to you all Je uh, Jeanette Mason. She is a certified nutritional practitioner with a focus on digestion and mental health. She's worked with a wide range of clients from athletes, business professionals, families, as well as organizations like the BC's Nurses Union and the Canadian Mental Health Association. The root of her work is education. She believes that by equipping individuals with the knowledge about how their bo own body works, the choices about how to help their body and will help them heal and thrive better. Um, and with that, I'll let Jeanette take it away. Thanks so much, Filza. Okay, good evening, everybody. I hope you've had a great day so far. Today, we are working with the brand Progressive. And if you haven't heard of Progressive before, although I'm sure you have, if you're a frequent shopper of Healthy Planet, we are the ones with the nice blue bottle and the white writing. And essentially, a little bit of background on Progressive, first of all, is Progressive is actually an Ontario-based company. It was started by a naturopathic doctor right here in Ontario. His name is Dr. Michaela Adams. And essentially, the whole philosophy behind Progressive is to be able to provide provide like natural and professional level care at an accessible price point. So a lot of what we're going to be talking about today is all about foundational nutrition, foundational health. We're going to be talking about lifestyle, nutrition, as well as supplements. But what I really want to make sure that we get across is that there's never going to be one supplement that's going to kind of cover all of your bases. And if you're not taking care of your mental health, if you're not taking care of your overall stress resilience, then we're going to come into some problems. So you'll often find actually throughout this presentation, I'll be weaving in a couple different things. So it's not just going to be one lane highway here, we're going to be looking at all different branches of health. So for today, we are going to be talking all about how to support yourself at a foundational level. So we're going to chat about some of the main health challenges that we're seeing, um, some of them that I'm seeing in my personal practice, also what we're just seeing in our communities today. 
And then we're going to talk about the foundations to healthy living. So we're going to chat all about gut health and digestion and really the link to your vitality. And gut health is my jam. I love talking about digestive health. So if you've got questions, feel free to uh, fire them away in the Q&A box. I know we have Philza here to help filter those and help answer those. And I'll certainly leave some time at the end to answer some as well. We're then going to talk about how to actually boost your energy and your vibrancy without coffee. Yes, it is possible. Believe me. And then how to essentially change your health story by investing in you. So what I really want you to ask yourself right now is, you know, what do you want your future self to look like? What do you want your future self to feel like on the inside? You know, once we're actually able to tap into, you know, our true wants and desires and needs, it becomes a little bit easier for us to then kind of create that roadmap to success, so to speak. So really tune into your why for why you're here today and really what you're hoping to get, you know, once you do start really investing in your health. I'd also love to ask you, you know, who is it that you actually need to show up as on a daily basis? Are you a mom? Are you an entrepreneur? Are you a dad? Are you a grandma? Are you someone that has a community of people around you and you're trying to uplift them and be supportive in one way or another? And what are your goals? What is it that you are actually wanting to achieve out of life? And then lastly, who is it that you need to be showing up for? Do you have dependents? Do you have people around you? Do you have a best friend who relies on you every day for that, you know, pick me up text or that pick me up phone call? Because all of these things essentially go into our bucket of our why, our why, why we are here, why we wake up in the morning and, you know, brush our teeth and drink our coffee and do our workouts and essentially support ourselves at that ground level. And when we really are able to tap into that why, we're going to be a lot more connected to, you know, the reasons that we start to go through these habits and start to go through these routines. So speaking of habits and routines, this is a really important pillar when we are thinking about creating a strong foundation for success. Now, it can be really easy, and I see this in clinical practice a lot, actually. So we have individuals come into our practice, and they are looking for some solutions. You know, they're saying, okay, give me that laundry list of supplements. Give me that laundry list of food that I should be eating every day, and maybe some food that I should be avoiding because they want to be able to have a clear plan of what it is that they are going to do. Now, while that's all well and good, what's really more important than that is to actually be able to really zero in on a couple key things that we can be doing every day that actually lights us up from the inside, that we feel really good doing. And when we're able to kind of tap into that, when we are feeling good doing this, whether this is, you know, staying committed to drinking enough water throughout the day, maybe you start your morning with a morning walk so that you're getting that sunshine, you're getting that vitamin D, you're helping to reset your circadian rhythm, whatever it is, when we're really able to tap into those things that we like, it then starts to create a bit of a domino effect. And all of a sudden you're looking for other ways to help support your health. And to take it a little bit further, when we think about habits and just kind of the science behind habits, we know that they make us more efficient because when we don't have to be thinking about something, we have that mental space available to be looking at the next steps and where we want to go. It reduces our need to plan. It creates structure in our lives. And I know for a lot of us, what I'm hearing and what I've experienced as well is that we are in this heightened state of stress. <laughs> there's a lot going on in our communities and there's a lot going on around us. So when we're able to get rooted into an everyday routine and habit, it can help us feel a little bit more centered and a little bit more grounded. And then lastly, it saves time, which is our most valuable resource. You know, when we talk to people and when we talk about this last 14 months that we've kind of been just kind of enduring this pandemic together, one thing that people really value is that they have a little bit more time. The problem happens when we're not using this time to support ourselves. So when this time ends up being lost because we're, you know, binge watching Netflix or we're, you know, in that everyday scroll on Instagram and Facebook, you know, those things can be okay for a short while, but it's not something that's going to really help propel, propel us forward. So for today, I'm hoping that you're going to take a few key takeaways that you're going to be able to put down into your daily planner and say, okay, yes, I'm going to be able to create this into a habit, into something that I actually look forward to doing every single day. 
So of course, we're going to talk about nutrition. I myself am a nutritionist and, you know, not talking about food is really out of the question because food is so important. It really does help provide us the building blocks to support our health, to support our body, to ensure that we have the energy and, and really the mental clarity for us to be able to go about our days. Now, nutrition has been identified as a major factor in reaching health and wellness goals and is also something that we can control. So it's something that we actually have almost complete autonomy over, which is really cool. Nutrition becomes even more important as we age and key nutrients that support healthy aging and improve your resilience, as well as help you to continue to reach your goals are there. And we're going to be talking about what those key nutrients are. Now, as I just said, you know, what you put into your body matters. So when we think about, you know, supporting our cognitive health, we know that there's going to be specific nutrients that are necessary to promote healthy, our healthy brain, to help promote our healthy nervous system. And similar would go to, you know, hormone balance, right? There's going to be certain nutrients and certain key pillars that we need to ensure that we have adequate hormone production, detoxification, as well as just supporting all of the organs and glands that work together to make you, you. And as I mentioned, it does all start with a strong foundation. So when I think about starting, you know, at just at the very, very base level, we really do have to begin with the gut because at the end of the day, you are not what you eat. Rather, you are what you absorb. So if your digestion is not working effectively, if you are feeling sick after you eat, if you're feeling bloated, tired, if you're showing other signs of digestive unwellness, let's say, uh, you know, constipation, diarrhea, you know, anything that kind of fits into this world, this is a surefire sign that your digestion is not working effectively. And when that happens, that essentially means that we are not able to actually utilize, well, absorb and utilize all of those nutrients that we are hoping to get from our healthy eating and from our fantastic supplements. So it is really, really key that we ensure that we focus on improving digestion and really giving our digestive system everything that we can to make sure that it's able to function the way that we need it to. Because, you know, whether you've had digestive issues in the past or not, maybe you've had a friend or a family member that suffered from digestive ill health, you know that this can really rob you of some of your best days. You know, I, I have experience with, you know, a variety of, you know, IBS conditions, but also IBDs, colitis runs in my family. And it's something that I've experienced as well. And, you know, it, it, it drains you because again, when you're not able to actually digest and assimilate all of those nutrients, well, your energy is just going to go out the window because you don't have those building blocks, that strong foundation. So speaking of digestion and speaking of absorption of nutrients, did you know that there is one specific area of the digestive tract where about 90% of our nutrients get absorbed? Well, yes, it is on the screen here. And if you look uh, to the right hand side, I have a nice little diagram of the digestive tract, essentially the, the small and large uh, intestine here. And it's really in the small intestine where the majority of our nutrients get absorbed. And so this is just after the stomach. So we really need to make sure that not only are we, you know, digesting our food effectively at the beginning of the digestive tract, but we also need to make sure that our intestines and in particular, our small intestine has everything that it needs to be able to properly absorb and therefore us to be able to utilize those important nutrients once it reaches our bloodstream. Now in the small intestine, we have our villi and our microvilli, which are basically like these finger like projections all along our intestinal tract. And then we also have these circular folds. And what all of these do together is you could almost imagine them like an underwater sea creature, right? They're kind of uh, swishing and going back and forth, and they're actually grabbing the nutrients from our food. So when they're working effectively, they're able to do that. But when they're not working effectively, let's say we're not eating the best, maybe we have a lot of inflammation going on in the gut, um, you know, a variety of reasons for this to be happening. Our intestine actually isn't able to be absorbing the nutrients the way that it should be. And of course, when this happens, this is when we start to see issues with dysbiosis, like an imbalance of good to bad bacteria, as well as just, you know, not absorbing the nutrients effectively. So malabsorption can start to occur. 
Now, digestion is incredibly important. And, you know, the main thing to remember is that through digestion is how we are able to absorb our nutrients. And without good digestion, your body will not have the tools to support a healthy life. I mean, it's as simple as that, right? That's why for most practitioners, they really do try to begin with ensuring proper digestion. And now poor digestion can result in low energy, low moods, achy joints, and body pain. Now, nobody wants to be going through life with a digestive system that is not working efficiently. So there's a couple different things that can impair digestion, but what I am seeing more and more often, especially in today's society, is actually how we sit down and eat our meals. Now, you can type into the chat box if you wish, or just reflect back onto yourself, but when is the last time you sat down at your dining table or at your breakfast bar and ate a meal without any distractions? And so by distractions, I'm talking about the phone, I'm talking about the computer, I'm talking about the TV, right? I know quite a few people, and again, I, I will not be shy in sharing this with you. I too enjoy sometimes eating my dinner and watching, you know, a rerun of Desperate Housewives or whatever show I'm into at the moment. You know, it, it's not something to be ashamed of, but what we have to realize is that this can actually impact our digestion. You know, digestion begins with the senses. And so if we are totally enthralled with a TV show or if we're busy working and, you know, so many people do those working lunches. Again, I've been there too. And, you know, you're responding to emails and you're, you know, eating your salad and you're going back and forth and back and forth. And all of a sudden your salad is gone and you're like, what did that even taste like? I don't remember because I was so busy trying to make sure that, you know, I got these emails off on time. And so essentially what ends up happening when we're not paying attention to our food, our blood flow is actually being deviated away from our digestive tract and to our brain, right? So that we're able to, you know, have proper mental function. So number one is not paying attention to your food. And so when we're, when we're not paying attention to our food, a variety of actions can become impaired. Number one, though, I would say is that the, you know, the salivary amylase that begins in the mouth, you know, when you start, when you see your food and you get really excited about it and all of a sudden you get a little bit more saliva, that can actually become decreased. And so if we don't have enough salivary amylase being produced in the mouth, this can also impact the essential trigger for our body to be producing a sufficient enough of a sufficient enough amount of stomach acid. So this is another issue that we see so often and is certainly can be, uh, you know, attributed back to digestive concerns. So again, if we're not in the moment, really enjoying our foods, really ensuring that all of these digestive processes are kind of being ticked off the list, right? We're seeing it. We have the salivary amylase that's then triggering to our stomach to be releasing our stomach acid, as well as various other enzymes. Then, you know, the actual breakdown of our food can certainly become impaired. So low stomach acid can be very common in older adults. It can be a result of eating too fast or just not paying attention while we are, we, while we are eating. And stomach acid is really important, not only to help break down our food, but also to be breaking down and essentially eliminating certain pathogens. You know, one way that we that we get sick and that we get, you know, some sort of bug or viruses into our system is from the food that we eat. So if we're eating something that has some sort of bacteria on it, and again, we don't have enough stomach acid to be able to break that down, then that not so great bacteria can end up in our gut and can create a whole bunch of disturbances. One of those disturbances can actually be dysbiosis. And what dysbiosis means is just an imbalance of good to bad bacteria. So I'm sure you know, we have a plethora of good bacteria. I mean, uh, you know, our microbiome makes up the majority of our digestive tract, but it's also found throughout our body, right? And it's really important that we have a proper balance to ensure proper digestion and, you know, a variety of other things too. Now, dysbiosis, as I mentioned, can be caused due to to, you know, not having enough enzyme production, not having enough stomach acid production, but it can also be caused by things like chlorinated water, antibiotic use, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, as well as alcohol. So you can imagine if you have kind of a whole concoction of these and, and maybe you're reliant on some of these long-term, it can create some negative effects for our digestion. 
And then the last point here that I'll just mention tonight, when we think about, you know, impacting our digestive health is stress. You know, there's no way to really beat around the bush when we're talking about this. Stress is one of those, you know, things that just kind of derails the whole magic of the human body. You know, when we're in a state of stress, there's something that happens. What basically happens is that we get shunted into this state of being known as fight flight or freeze, right? And so when we're in that state, sure, we, we feel like we have a lot of energy. All of a sudden, our blood is being shunted to our periphery, so to our arms and our legs and our hands, as well as to our brain, so that we're able to think through that stress or move through that stress. But what we have to realize is that when we are in a state of stress, there's going to be less nutrients and really less blood flow being circulated to our digestive system. So it's not going to be working as effectively. So there are a variety of digestive sy sy symptoms that can show up. And so these are just some of the top ones that I see. Um, a couple that I wanted to point out because I feel like they are maybe less obvious will be something like hair loss, right? So uh, this is really important because we are talking about foundational nutrition. You know, when I am, you know, working with a client or speaking with someone that's dealing with a lot of hair loss, you know, there's going to be some key deficiencies that could be at play here. It could also be a hormonal issue, but the root cause is often going to be associated with some sort of digestive dysfunction. Because again, if our digestive system is not working effectively, we're not absorbing those important nutrients, then we're not going to be having the building blocks for, re for producing hair. Um, similarly with ridges and nails. So ridges on your nails is another sign that, you know, there's some sort of imbalance going on here. You know, us as humans, we're not meant to have these deep seated ridges. And, you know, so anyways, that these are just a couple things to, to watch out for. Of course, the more common symptoms would be your, your gas, your bloating, your abdominal cramps, diarrhea, constipation, acid reflux, and fatigue, as well as burping. So if you are someone that's experiencing a lot of digestive issues, I definitely Definitely encourage you to speak to a healthcare practitioner, you know, a, a naturopath, a nutritionist, um, even beginning with some of the natural health experts at Healthy Planet. I know they have a lot of fantastic staff there um, just as a place to begin, right? So then hopefully they can help pinpoint you on, you know, maybe some next steps and who else to talk to. So outside of working with a practitioner, there is a foundational nutrient that you're probably well aware of. It can be associated with improving digestive health. And for me, that is the probiotic. And just as important as a probiotic would actually be a prebiotic. So before I get into the slides here, I just want to ask, who here knows what a prebiotic is and what does it do? So if you know, please feel free to type it into the chat box. Um, I would love to see your answers. Awesome. I see quite a few coming in here. Let me see if I can pull them up. Yes, prebiotic feeds probiotics. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. Yeah, you guys are you guys are right on the money. And they actually do a little bit more than that too. So I'll get into that in just a second to make sure my slides can work effectively. So, so step one, when, I, when I'm thinking about foundational health is make it a habit of taking quality probiotics. So, you know, there, this is well supported by research that probiotics have been incredibly beneficial for supporting a variety of digestive concerns. Now, not all probiotics are going to do all things, but we're going to talk about how to actually figure out what probiotic will be best for you in just a moment. Now, there very simply put, probiotics help to balance the gut microflora, which is really important for overall intestinal health, as well as absorption of important nutrients. Probiotics contribute to a healthy digestive system that can optimally absorb and synthesize nutrients. Now the importance of prebiotics. So prebiotics absolutely can help feed the good bacteria, but they do so much more than that. So when you actually get into the research of probiotics, when you're looking at them, oftentimes they're looking at maybe one or two strains at a time per study. And what you'll always find is that for the, you know, when the studies are actually showing some sort of beneficial result, there's been the addition of prebiotics. 
added in either through diet or more often than not through supplementation. And the reason being is that prebiotics also help to support overall intestinal health. So they've actually been shown to reduce cellular death, which can happen due to things like leaky gut. I'm just throwing out some keywords here, inflammation. Um, you know, if we have a lot of food intolerances, you know, cell death is something that that's common, right? There's going to be turnover here, but with the prebiotics, it actually helps with the overall integrity of the intestinal lining, which is really important. In addition, prebiotics can also help to crowd out some of that bad bacteria that I was talking about before. So think your salmonella, your helicobacter bacteria and other harmful bacteria. And then of course, on top of that, they do provide you know, necessary fuel or food for the probiotics and actually through the um, metabolism of the prebiotics by the probiotics, something that gets released is short chain fatty acids. And again, not to go too far down the rabbit hole, but when you do look at the research, short chain fatty acids have really been identified as the primary link for the reason why probiotics can be so effective for the gut. So, you know, again, depending on what area of research you're looking in, you're going to see lots of fascinating studies looking at the variety of benefits for, um, you know, individuals to be taking probiotics. These are just some of the top ones. But again, you can go really far down the rabbit hole. And uh, if you need any additional resources, you can always email us because we've got a lot of cool studies at our fingertips. So number one, of course, they've been shown to help improve digestion. They've been shown to help fight bacteria and viruses. They've also been shown to help temper inflammation and support mood, behavior, and cognition. So something that's really important is that in our probiotics, we have a combination of the prebiotics with the probiotics. And the reason being is because of what I just mentioned in that slide, just two slides ago, this one here, because of this action, right? Because it's all well and good for us to have these fantastic human strain probiotics. But if we don't have the prebiotics in addition, then it can be really difficult to ensure that, you know, every single customer that's going to be using this probiotic blend has a sufficient enough of you know, prebiotics in their diet or prebiotics through supplementation to be getting that well-rounded holistic benefit. So what you'll find is that we actually have multiple probiotic strains in each formula. And we have a variety of formulas available. This is just one that I put on the screen here. This is our 60 billion. And all of them are from 100% human strain. And we use human strain bacteria to better match our own gut microflora. And again, what we've been seeing through research is that the human strains do tend to have a greater adherence rate to the intestinal walls. The delivery system is in non-enteric delayed vegetable capsules, and this ensures that the healthy bacteria arrive alive in your intestinal tract. And lastly, they are true ID certified to guarantee the presence of every probiotic species. Now, true ID uh, is essentially DNA testing of the probiotics. And this is something that's pretty unique to the probiotic space, but I think we'll start to see more and more brands and more and more companies looking at incorporating this because species really matters. You know, oftentimes, you know, when you're working with a healthcare practitioner, they're going to recommend a specific combination of probiotics for you based on your own, you know, physical health condition, whatever it is that might be going on. And so when you go into a health food store and you're picking out your probiotic, you want to be darn sure that what is on the label is actually in the capsules and, and is alive and is well and is able to function effectively within your digestive system. So that's why we actually use the True ID certification. Um, um, essentially, this is a program. It came out of the University of Guelph. Um, we have the link here. Well, we can put it into the chat box if you want to learn more about it. I find this really beneficial as a practitioner, but also as someone that consumes probiotics regularly because, you know, there's only so much that, you know, Health Canada can kind of govern. So being able to go just that one step further to ensure, you know, the species that are actually on the label are in the capsule is really important. So habit number one will be make a habit of supplementing with 
probiotics. Again, I cannot it, like say this enough, without a healthy digestive system, you will not be able to receive the benefit of optimal nutrition, no matter what supplements you take. So we do have our gut health checklist, which is on our website. Um, so again, we, we can put this link in uh, the chat box so you can find that there. And essentially you go through and you answer a series of questions and then it will help to populate which uh, you know probiotic formula may be best for you based on your current health conditions. Again, Healthy Planet has some amazing nutritionists and health practitioners on staff. So talk to them. Definitely. You know, you, you, I know for some of you, you're, you're not in Ontario, so maybe you don't have a local store to you. Um, so then this gut health checklist will be super helpful, but you know, either way, I think we really do need to, you know, utilize the resources that we have around us. And there's some really, really fantastic people, um, through the stores. And so, you know, being able to just get a little bit more advice in that way can be helpful to make sure that what you're choosing is specific for you. So, you know, with probiotics, we know that it's going to help with gut protection, digestion, and ensure that when you are eating your food, you're actually going to be able to absorb and utilize those important nutrients. So step two, we're getting more into our functional superfoods and talking about just eating more super nutrients. So if I were to ask you, what are most Canadians not getting enough of, what would you say? What are most Canadians not eating enough of? Hmm. Well, as a nutritionist, I would say vegetables. Um, and, you know, I joke about this, but you, this is a very real problem. And I see this all ages. I had a lovely client call yesterday, actually, with um, a 90 year old gentleman. And he's fantastic. He's, you know, he's living his best life. But, you know, he's still looking for ways to help him improve energy and just feel a little bit better every day. And, you know, I asked him about his vegetable intake and just, you know, what's what's your average, you know, daily intake like? It's like, oh, I'll have an apple a day. Like, okay. And anything else? Not so much. So, you know, there's a variety of reasons why people don't eat enough vegetables. Taste can certainly be up there, preparation methods, access, but these are really important. So we need to find ways to be able to really harness the nutrition from these vegetables in a way that is sustainable for you and for, and for your family. So vegetables and functional superfoods are incredibly important for liver health, digestive health, and heart health. They've been shown to naturally cleanse the body, support your immune system, balance pH, and improve energy. So we need to be looking for different ways to include these nutrients. And this is where functional foods come in. So when I'm talking about functional foods, I'm talking about greens powders, fruit powders, um, and even protein powders as well. Because basically what we're doing is that we're taking these really important nutrients, we're isolating them, and we're essentially formulating them in such a way that it's a really easy you know, once a day kind of thing for you to at least get your base level nutrition needs met. Because as I mentioned, we lead, you know, very busy lifestyles. For some of us, we just have an aversion to certain foods and, you know, we're just not going to be going there or, or really, you know, maybe we're just not in a stage in our life to be, you know, pushing the boundary on what we can start to be bringing into our diet on a daily basis. You know, other things that we have to realize is access to fresh fruits and vegetables. You know, I believe all of us are from Canada. I didn't, I didn't check all of the cities, but, you know, for a lot of us, especially for us in Ontario, you know, we can only grow local food six months of the year and that's pushing it. You know, we're just coming up on our, our the beginning of our growing season now. So access to fresh fruits and vegetables is certainly, you know, an issue. And then I also have to bring it back to digestion because of, you know, certain digestive conditions, we might actually be avoiding certain food groups because it creates a lot of, you know, digestive disturbances. So I'd love for you to ask yourself, how many vegetables are you eating a day? And of that, how many different varieties and colors are you getting each day? Yeah, okay, got it, you took it, you took a moment? Okay, good. So on top of that, we have to think of the energy factor. Now I know a lot of people are feeling burnt out. I see some hands being raised. Yeah, I'm tired. You know, a lot of us are just relying on coffee or other stimulants to get through the day. And while I am not, you know, shutting down coffee, I love myself, my morning coffee. It's not something that we should have to be relying on to just get through the work day or just get through, you know, the next 12 hours. So there are different things that we can look out for. 
And on top of that, time is precious. We know that a lot of people are on the go. And so they're looking for quick fixes for energy. So some quick fixes that I always like to have in my cupboard and just kind of to keep, you know, top of mind is certain vegetables, superfoods, and botanicals. So I'll just pull out a couple of them from the, this list here. Number one, one of my favorite foods for energy is beetroot. So whether you juice it, you roast it, you add it to a smoothie or you add it to a salad or you have the powdered form, beetroot can be so great for energy because essentially what it does is it's a vasodilator. And what that means is it essentially can shunt blood to where blood needs to go. So for a lot of us, we need to have more blood flow up to our brain to make us feel alert and energized and ready for the day. And so beetroot can actually help with that. Ginkgo biloba and Siberian ginseng have also been shown to be great for mental focus and mental clarity. You know, sometimes people rely on coffee because they feel like that's the only way they can like get down to work and, you know, power through those eight hours. But there are other, you know, stimulants out there that we can rely on that maybe won't have such detrimental effects, you know, because if we are using coffee day in and day out and we're having multiple cups a day, as I'm sure you know, this can certainly impact digestion, not to mention the impact on your nervous system. So there's a variety of superfoods here that I love to just kind of reach for. And I really love that they're actually in this blend. So veggie greens, you've probably seen it before if you're a regular shopper at Healthy Planet. Veggie Greens has been around for a long time and for good reason. This was one of the first formulas that was produced by Dr. Mikhail Adams. And it was because he was seeing in his everyday naturopathic practice, people were not getting enough vegetables. And on top of that, they weren't getting enough diversity. Because as you know, when we add in diversity of fruits and vegetables, we're getting a whole new range of nutrients. So that's really what you'll find in veggie greens. It really is up in the game for greens, powders. And I will tell you, it is delicious. My brother, as well as my partner, actually, are both really, really picky eaters, and they both love veggie greens. So it comes in a variety of flavors. I'd say my favorite is pineapple coconut, but you might have to try, um, try a couple and see which ones work best for you. So in this formula, you will find um, very, very high antioxidant vegetables and green foods from land and sea. We also have plant oils, herbs, and extracts. We have phytonutrients that you do not get in your everyday vegetables. And one serving of veggie greens is the antioxidant equivalent of six to eight servings of vegetables. As with all of our progressive products, it has been professionally tested and it's naturally flavored and sweetened. So it is loaded with alkaline superfoods. It also includes ingredients like inulin, which is a prebiotic fiber. And it was designed for optimal digestion as well as absorption of nutrients. You're probably getting a theme here. It, it's because it's really important. Um, and just to kind of leave you with this, uh, it does include an extraordinary spectrum of nutrients that can only be obtained by consuming the entire rainbow of vegetable colors. So, you know, if you are someone that kind of sticks with your spinach and your cucumber and you don't really like to go past that, this is a nice addition because it is going to add a huge diversity of nutrients to your daily regime. So it's really easy to take uh, and it's available in powder or capsules. So whatever you prefer. I like the powder because I'll just add it to my water glass and I'll be good to go. <laughs> So step three, we want to talk about our healthy, you know, fueling your healthy body, but also focusing on our healthy mind with omega-3s. Now, if you're not someone that takes omega-3s regularly, it's something that I definitely encourage you to look into. You know, essential fatty acids, these are a specific type of fat required by the body to establish and maintain overall health and well-being. Now, they're called essential because the body is unable to synthesize them on its own. Now, there's two main types of essential fatty acids that we'll talk about today, omega-6 and omega-3. Now, omega-6 fatty acids is naturally found in the seeds of most plants as well as grains. It's also known as linoleic acid or LA. You might sometimes see that on certain labels. Now, omega-3 fatty acid, alpha linoleic acid, ALA, is found in cold water fish as well as the chloroplast of green leafy vegetables and in some raw nuts and seeds such as flax, chia, almonds, and walnuts. Now, the reason that adding in an omega-3 supplement is so important is essentially due to our standard Canadian diet or standard American diet, 
Now it's very, very different than what our ancestors used to eat. You know, our ancestors used to consume, you know, in general, a one-to-one -one ratio between omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids and current day we're closer to 20 to one ratio omega-6 to omega-3. Now, a lot of this is really due to processed foods, a lot of our diet based in grains and certain oils, and then also a lot of livestock, right? If it's, you know, depending on the quality of the livestock, unfortunately, many of them are fed, you know, grains instead of grazing naturally. And so that means that what the animal eats will then be metabolized in their body. And then we will also be consuming some of that omega-6 fatty acids as well. So wild caught fish, on the other hand, is a fantastic source of omega-3s. So what omega-3s break down into is two main parts. We have EPA and then we have DHA. And these are very important for different reasons, really, but they also work very synergistically to support the body, reducing inflammation, as well as support the mind, so improving cognition. This is just kind of a snapshot, just showing you, you know, where EPA and DHA is most beneficial in the body. For example, DHA is fantastic for brain development, eye health, and cognitive function, whereas EPA is fantastic for boosting our mood, triglyceride support, and then together they are fantastic for heart health, joint health, and our immune response. Now, research benefits of omega-3s, again, are vast. These are just, you know, top four that I wanted to pull out for you guys. So number one, very beneficial if, you know, if you have a history of heart disease in your family or just to support overall cardiovascular health, omega-3 is really important here. And then also inflammatory disease. So EPA in particular is fantastic for reducing overall inflammatory load in the body. So if we're thinking about someone that is dealing with, you know, any sort of rheumatoid arthritis or IBS or, or any other inflammation in the body, omega-3 is really, really important. And then sarcopenia, as well as exercise recovery. So sarcopenia is an issue that we're seeing more and more often, especially in the aging population. And essentially what this is, is the inability to produce and really retain lean muscle mass. And lean muscle mass is really important as we age because it is really essentially the what holds onto our bones. So it actually helps with overall bone integrity. Um, and then also exercise recovery. So the ability for us to be able to wake up the next day and go back and work out again without having much you know, pain and fatigue. And then lastly, mood balance and cognitive support. I think this is often what most people think of when they think of omega-3s. We think cognition, we think eye health, because back in the day, that's where a lot of the studies were found. But now, of course, we're seeing it very far reaching. And when we think about cognitive support, think about, you know, your kids and making sure they're having enough omega-3s and also yourselves, you know, students, people that are working, people that, you know, find that they cannot finish sentences effectively, which sometimes I find myself in that. But Anyways, regardless, omega-3 is very, very important. So Progressive does have their omega essentials available in liquid as well as soft gels. And each serving provides 1,000 milligrams of EPA and 550 milligrams of DHA, which is really, you know, the preferred ratio. It's a two to one ratio of those both. And it also includes support nutrients like lemon oil and rosemary leaf extract. So our omega, our omega essential omega threes are sourced from cold water fish. So this is sustainably sourced small bodied fish and we use molecular distillation, meaning that you're going to have a very, very pure source of omega three, which is really important when you are looking for an omega three supplement. We have them in the bioavailable form of omega-3s. And then as I mentioned, we do have important cofactors because when it comes to absorbing and utilizing your omega-3s, we need to make sure that our liver is functioning effectively, our gallbladder is functioning effectively. And so essentially these nutrients here, the lemon oil and the rosemary in particular, have been shown to help absorb and therefore utilize the omega-3 fat. So habit number three, fuel your healthy body and mind with omega-3s in supplemental form every day. So it, as I mentioned, it does support cardiovascular health, cognitive and brain function. It helps to promote healthy mood balance and helps with cholesterol control. 
So step four, let's talk about micronutrients, okay? We're doing pretty good on time here, so let's, let's get into it. Are you getting proper micronutrients? So meeting the diet and nutrition needs of older people is crucial for the maintenance of health, functional independence, and quality of life. So, you know, as we age, our digestive fire tends to diminish. So they are essentially our ability to actually digest and synthesize nutrients goes down. So it's even more important for us to ensure that we are getting those base level nutrients as much as possible whenever we can. So, you know, for many people, and this was kind of similar with, you know, the veggie greens and why we'd be looking for functional superfoods is that, yeah, Canadians, we lead hectic lifestyles and making convenient, fast and processed food choices more often than quality food choices. Although we are surviving, it is unlikely most of us are providing our bodies with optimal nutrition. Now, in an ideal world, we would all eat a wide variety of local, fresh, organic foods that provide the nutrients we require, yet for most people, this isn't realistic to do every day. And we understand that. So choosing the right supplements to complement our food does make sense. So as a review, vitamins and minerals, these are organic molecules that assist in regulating our body processes. They are known as micronutrients because we require them in smaller quantities than we do the macronutrients. So vitamins actually do not supply energy to our bodies, but they are used by the cells to produce energy as well as aid pathways. They exist in both fat soluble and water soluble form. Now, minerals are also categorized as macro or micro, depending on our requirements for them. And minerals have many different functions. They are important for fluid regulation. So think about um, someone that is often um, inflamed or just has a hard time you know, releasing the retained water. They're also important for bone structure, muscle movement, as well as nerve functioning. Now, for a variety of reasons, we may not be getting adequate nutrients from food alone. This includes our food selection, our recommended dietary allowance limitations, lifestyle factors, bioavailability of nutrients, and conventional farming. And occasionally, extreme deficiencies can result. Now, this is just a snapshot of some common deficiencies that we you know, hear about in clinical practice, also that we hear about you just talking to customers on a regular basis. And so this is, you know, by no means the end all be all, but it's just kind of an idea to get that thought process started as to, you know, maybe if I'm feeling really tired, if I'm having low energy levels, maybe I should, you know, speak to my general practitioner and, and, you know, do a blood test and really just see, am I deficient in some of these nutrients? Um, same can be said with poor memory, low immunity, hair loss, and, and, you know, various other symptoms of the body. So we do see a correlation and it has been proven that certain deficiencies can result in certain symptoms showing up. So it's really important to pay attention to our body. Yes. Symptoms, actually means something. It's like an alarm that's going off. And instead of, you know, shunting it away and looking for these quick fixes, it's better to actually open the door and be like, oh, hey, I'm low in iron. Okay, let's deal with that. So that's essentially what this slide is all about. So for people that are just looking for overall nutrient supplementation, there's really nothing better than a multivitamin, but not all multis are the same. So it is really important to look, of course, at the quality of the vitamins that are going to be found in the formula and also to really see, okay, is this specific for my age group? Is this specific for my sex, for what I'm going through in life? Okay, so um, essentially what we have with progressive is we actually have eight individualized formulas for each stage of life, because you know your body needs vitamins and minerals for normal growth and functioning. But from gender to activity level to age, everyone's recommended dietary needs are going to be different. So starting with the adult men and women's multi, we have a comprehensive formula that includes immune support, vision and skin support, as well as energy support. And you'll find this in the electrolyte replacement ingredients. So there's a variety of minerals that will be added in as well as sea salt. Um, and essentially what these do is they help to balance minerals and electrolytes that get lost as part of strenuous activity or just, you know, living our day-to-day -day life. We also have additional antioxidant support in the form of CoQ10, selenium, alpha lipoic acid, and so on. 
And then this is really where progressive stands apart from the crowd because we've also added in things like green food concentrates. So we have specific nutrients to support healthy bones, eyes, heart, and thyroid. And then depending on the sex, we'll have additional tribulus and zinc for the men to help with testosterone function. And then we'll have more cranberry and iron for the women. And then the active men and, and women's multi is essentially like the adult formulas and then with additional specific nutrients that really do help to support someone that is under an immense amount of stress or someone that tends to work out quite regularly. Because what we've actually seen is that stress, whether it is in the physical form of working out or mental stress, there's certain um, just depletions in the body that tend to actually mirror each other. So you will find, you know, additional B vitamins, you'll find additional minerals. Um, again, there's going to be very highly alkaline green foods like spirulina, chlorella, alfalfa, kelp, and broccoli extracts, as well as additional antioxidants. And then we also do have men and women's 50 plus. So again, thinking specifically about this age group, and then we have the two sexes. We have the men's formula and the women's formula. So in both, you're gonna find nutrients to support cardiovascular health. In the men's formula, you're going to find sal palmetto and pumpkin seed, as well as lycopene, which help with overall prostate function, as well as testosterone function. And then for the women's, you're going to find, uh, you know, black cohosh and a variety of other herbs to help again with this stage of life. Um, we'll also see for both of them a very highly absorbable calcium because calcium is one mineral that we really do need to hone in on, especially, you know, once we hit that 50 plus, um, not that it's not important before then, but in particular 50 plus is really when we want to be paying attention to overall bone health. So there's going to be an, the addition of calcium as well as more magnesium and various other minerals to support overall bone integrity. So to kind of leave you off here, when we think about progressive, number one is that you'll find our formulas are very much personalized to the stage of life that you're in, your activity levels, as well as your sex. Of course, all of our uh, formulas are going to be natural and comprehensive and incredibly holistic. Our testing, I spoke about True ID, but we really do so much more than that. You know, even with our omega-3s, we have this whole sustainability panel where we do look at the fishing practices. Of course, we are going to look at, you know, overall toxic levels. We're going to look at just overall integrity levels of the omega-3s. And this is really important because, you know, when we're investing money into supplements, when we're investing into our health, we need to make sure that our bodies are actually going to be able to not only absorb it and utilize it, but get a really great benefit from it. So that's where I will leave you today, um, just as a kind of wrap up here. So step one, adding in some probiotics. Step two, looking at veggie greens. Step three, omega essentials. And step four, adding in a multi that is specific for you. Now, as I said at the beginning of the presentation, you know, supplements are not going to be the end all be all. We really do need to make sure that we are looking at you, yourself. You need to be looking at yourself, right? And looking at the whole picture. Supplements can really help elevate our health. But if we are not ensuring that we are, you know, eating nutritious foods as much as possible, you know, sleeping enough for our body and so that we wake up feeling energized and feeling refreshed, drinking enough water. Oh, I can't tell you. Water is so incredibly important, you know, not just for energy levels, but it is essentially, you know, one of the ways that we are able to detoxify a lot of these excess toxins that we come into contact with. And, you know, for a variety of other reasons, but make sure you're drinking enough water, make sure you're moving your body minimum of 30 minutes per day, getting outside in nature more than ever is this incredibly important. I just before getting on here, I was actually just sitting uh, over at the park with my dog and just, you know, taking in that sunshine. And it's so incredibly beneficial for your nervous system. Socialize. I know there's only so much that we can do right now, but pick up the phone, you know, call your friend, call your mom, call your grandma, laugh as much as possible. I love finding those funny reels and sending those to my friends, funny YouTube video, whatever it is, try and get your community involved with it self-care, whatever that means to you. And then lastly, of course, take your vitamins. <laughs> 
So I did want to let you guys know before I look at the questions that we do have a variety of free Wellness Wednesday webinars if you guys want to learn more about supporting your health. So the next one is actually going to be presented by Dr. Olivia Rose on how to make your skin glow at any age naturally, and that's going to be on June 9th. So Phil's is going to put the link in the chat in case you want to join us. And we are also going to be putting a feedback form in the chat because the reason that we do these talks is to support you guys. So we want to make sure that we are addressing the topics that you really want to be addressed, that we are answering your questions, and that you're feeling really good when you come to our talks. Um, so again, I just want to say a huge thank you to Healthy Planet for hosting us tonight. If there are any follow-up questions, of course, you know, you've got your fantastic Healthy Planet staff. You can also email us directly, education at jamisonlabs.com. And you can find us on social media at My Progressive on Instagram and Facebook. So what time do we got? 8.23, we just made it. I'm gonna see if there is any questions left. Okay, perfect. It looks like Filza got a lot of them. Um, I will address this one question by Julia because this is a question that we get so, so often. And it is, can you give a child this vegetable greens as my child, as my children are very picky eaters. And so there are a lot of people that have been giving veggie greens to children. Uh, however, I will say that per Health Canada guidelines, this product is for adults. So my best advice would be to speak to your, you know, healthcare practitioner, ask, ask their advice because, you know, that can be very personalized, but in general, this one is an adult formula. Great question though. Uh, Jazdeep, yes, the recording will be emailed to you tomorrow, I believe. Okay, I'm gonna head over and see if there's anything left in the chat. That's great, thank you so much, everybody. Okay, Ali, what is a good multivitamin for a single male in his 30s? Um, Ali, I would ask, what is your activity level like if you are more of a sedentary individual and if you're feeling that you don't have a lot of stress, then I would just suggest the adult multi in men's. Uh, if not, if you are someone that you know takes part in regular physical activity, then I would just go ahead with the active men's multi. The name of the greens powder is veggie greens. Yes, and there's lots of different, lots of different flavors that you can choose from. Um, just gonna see if there's any more. All right, I'm sorry if I'm missing any questions, guys. There's a lot that are filtering in here. Uh, let me see if I can go over to this other one. Okay, best time of day to take your multivitamins. That's a great question. And actually, I'm really glad you asked that. So progressive multivitamins are in a divided dose. And this is because, especially with water-soluble vitamins, they don't stay in our bodies throughout the entirety of the day. So what we suggest is that you take two with breakfast, two with lunch, and two with dinner. Um, that's really the best to ensure proper absorption as well as utilization. So great question, CR. Uh, Angie, there are so many progressive products, not sure which one I would purchase female 59 as a very kind of like base level, I would say our, um, our, our women's multi 50 plus, I would also say, you know, depending on your diet and just, you know, how many vegetables you are getting. And again, the diversity veggie greens would be good looking at your omega-3 intake. Um, I didn't include the slide today to show you how much fish you actually need to be eating to get the appropriate amount of EPA and DHA. But for most individuals, they are not getting nowhere near enough. Um, so I would suggest that as well.
Again, I will say if we've missed any questions, because I know we're getting to the end of time here, you can always email us education at jamesonlabs.com. We do have a variety of nutritionists and naturopaths on staff. And so we'd be happy to answer your question that way. So Turia, that's an interesting question about which multi can be taken if you have fibromyalgia. So fibromyalgia, yes, this is, this is a nervous system issue. This is a nerve issue as well. Um, there hasn't been any contraindications with individuals that have fibromyalgia and are taking a multi. So I would say based on, you know, I, I don't know what your age is, but let's say take the adult woman's multi will be fine. If you are taking any sort of medication, some sort of pharmaceutical for fibromyalgia, just speak with your pharmacist first. You can just give them a quick call. Um, they will know right away, usually, if a supplement will be okay with that medication or not. Um, I do see a question. Oh, I think that one was already answered. All right. Uh, there is one question about do vitamins keep you up, up at night if taken with dinner? It honestly depends on the vitamins. So for example, I wouldn't take a B vitamin or a B complex before bed because that can be quite stimulating. Um, other vitamins, I mean, if there's any sort of green tea extract, of course, anything with any sort of caffeine in it for sure. Um, but our multivitamins, no, because I have taken those and I am someone that is quite sensitive to, you know, just like the energy given off by certain vitamins and I've been fine. Now, um, if you are someone that does tend to be, you know, just gets overstimulated quite easily, then maybe I would suggest just take it at breakfast and lunch and then just skip the time at dinner. Um, okay, so there's a question about how many servings are in the large container of veggie greens. I believe it's 58. I believe there's two sizes, which is a, a 30 serving size and a 58 serving size, but there they should have that on the website and on the label as well. All right, everyone. Well, I will just say thank you again so much to Healthy Planet for hosting. Thank all of you for attending today, for you know taking this time out with us. I love seeing all the comments coming in. Uh, if we did miss any of your questions, I will just reiterate again, please just email us education at jamesonlabs.com. I unfortunately cannot see all of them, but I feel that we answered most of them. I see Phil's going going like crazy answering all of your guys' questions. So thank you, thank you. And I will sign off for tonight. And as mentioned before, you will be getting an email sent out tomorrow, just kind of wrapping everything up for you. Uh, and you will be getting the recording as well. All right, everybody, take care.